As we opened the show today, I just made the comment that we've had some spray drift issues on our farm. We've had neighbors drift a little stuff on our fields. We've drifted a little bit of stuff on the neighbors' fields. Certainly didn't try to. We're trying to always reduce drift issues. It's never been a big deal one way or the other, but you just don't want to have any problems out there. So we're going to talk today about how we address drift issues now on our farm and just some things for you to maybe consider on your farm as well. Okay, let's first talk about spray tips because one thing that happens in fields and you're out spraying and, and maybe you're going to be out there for a few hours and the wind is fairly calm when you get started, but all of a sudden a big gust comes up or a little front comes through and for 10 minutes it gets a little windier than it was for the whole rest of the day, but you're out there spraying. We've well, already committed with what you put in the tank and you've kind of committed with your spray tips, but here's one thing that we like to do. We like to have at least triple nozzle bodies where we can switch our spray tips because some of the spray tips, like flat fans for example, have a higher percentage of small droplets, where other tips like turbo T-jets or air induction nozzles have larger droplets all the time. Well, larger droplets tend to blow less. So the first thing we do when drift is a concern is we'll switch nozzles. Another thing that you can do if you choose to, is use some type of drift retardant. There are several different families here, but the most common ones are polyacrylamides, they're kind of the old style of drift retardant, or the HPG polymer. The biggest difference is when that polyacrylamide drift retardant continues to run through your recirculation pump in the spray tank, you start to have pump shear and in effect, your drift retardant does not work as well after an hour's worth of spraying as compared to what it did in the first five minutes. So that's a big issue with that HPG polymer. It continues to work well throughout the whole process. My number one recommendation to you if you're going to use a drift retardant is this. Don't ever use more than the maximum rate unless you're 100% sure everything will be fine. In other words, if you put too much drift retardant in that spray tank, you can actually have problems uh, with getting the spray even out of the sprayer. It can be a big issue, so I usually will start using a half or maybe even a third rate of drift retardant, and then every batch I might throw in just a little more, a little more. Just be real careful what you're doing with those drift retardants. Don't overdo it. Well, the cool thing that I like about the HPG polymer, not only is it a little better product, it seems to mix with about everything, and you can buy it separately. Like with Border EG250, for example, you can buy it in like a little milk carton where it doesn't come pre-packed with all the other things, with the surfactants, with the ammonium sulfates, those kind of things. It's just that drift retardant. So if you get out in the field, you get going for a while, and all of a sudden the wind picks up on you, you can just jump back and dump a little of this in the spray tank. It's all fixed. You just circulate it a little bit, and you can keep on going. Okay, so we've solved the drift problem, but now we've created another problem. Guess what? We're going to have less spray coverage when we have bigger droplets out there. So whether you use a drift retardant or you use a different nozzle like a turbo T-jet or air induction nozzle, you will have reduced spray coverage. Is that a big deal? Well, here again, you know, if you only have a few weeds to kill, not a big issue. But if you've got lots of weeds, do you think that even a slight difference in coverage is going to matter? Absolutely it will. In fact, there was some data that we have from South Dakota State University that proves just that. Well, South Dakota State did their study in 2008, and they tried using a reduced rate of Roundup to control green foxtail and some broadleaf weeds just to see what kind of impact there would be on spray coverage because they weren't using quite enough Roundup to get the job done, so it's really going to make a difference if they got good coverage versus poor coverage. Well, where they used 15 gallons of water, they kind of compensated for poor coverage by having a lot of extra volume of water out in the field. And, you know, control was reduced using something like a turbo T-jet or an air induction nozzle where there's great big droplets. It was reduced like 8% on grasses, 5 to 8%. And on broad leaves, it was reduced 6 or 7%. So it's no big deal, especially if you didn't have that many weeds to begin with. But when you start reducing your coverage and reducing the amount of water that you have, now big droplets and low gallons of water really started to fight against you. And in terms of grass control, it dropped anywhere from 17 to 23%. And in broadleaf control, it dropped anywhere from 14 to 22 percent. So it was a pretty big drop off when you had big droplets and low gallons of water. Well, guess what? What are most guys doing with Roundup? They're using turbo T jets or air induction nozzles, and they're using low volumes of water, trying not to have off target spray drift. In the meantime, we're also greatly reducing the potential control from that product. So keep that in mind. If you're using great big droplets, you probably can't skimp so much on your water 
If you're using smaller droplets, you can get by a lot easier using low gallons of water. Okay, so here's our summary. We definitely want you to be concerned about spray drift. Don't get us wrong on that point. But what we would recommend to you is take your cleanest fields, the ones that don't have very many weeds, you maybe spray those on the slightly windier days. I didn't say windy, but slightly windier days, and then switch over to a turbo T-jet or air induction nozzle or use a drift retardant. Then take your weediest fields, spray those in the calmest and best days to spray, and just use a regular flat fan nozzle so you'll get the best spray coverage. As long as you handle things that way in your farm, you should have great performance year in and year out. The other thing is to watch for neighbors that have very susceptible crops to the products you want to use. If you have a susceptible crop next to you, make sure you're out there on the calmest days. Be very fussy about that. And you probably want to spray your end rows first when the wind is really calm so you don't have big issues. And then if it does pick up a little bit and you're way out in the middle of the field, you have less chances of having a problem. Well, all this is very important when you start talking about certain weeds, especially our Weed of the Week. We'll tell you why coming up next.